Uh, what was the inspiration behind Nemesis? Where did the idea come from? Uh, I think it came from uh, loving Sopranos, Goodfellas, all those things, all the movies about bad guys. And I thought, why is there not really any comics about super bad guys? You know, with all these superhero comics, but there's no super villain comics, really, you know? Um, so I made it as simple as I possibly could, something that a big mainstream audience would understand too, and wrote a super villain comic, essentially. Comic writers can sometimes do stuff that's really inaccessible to people who don't read comics, like civilians, you know? And like, uh, I, would, I would loan comics to people I loved, you know, out to, to friends at school and so on. And they'd be like, I don't even know where to start reading this, you know, like, do I start on this page or that page, you know, how, how do you even follow the format? And I realised how inaccessible comics can be. So I really tried about 10 years ago to simplify my stuff, even the way that the comic itself is laid out, like the way the art is laid out, I wanted it to be almost like storyboards, make it as simple as possible. And make the stories really accessible too. And Hollywood is kind of happens maybe because of that um, but it was never my plan because back then they weren't even making Spider-Man films really when I was starting writing comics um, so the idea of them doing creator owned movies is crazy I mean that's something that's just really happened the last few years but I've been very lucky that the books I've always done have always sold very well the creator owned books have done incredibly well you know things have gone really well so the artists uh, the risk is minimal, although it is still there, you're never ever guaranteed, you can't take it for granted and you really have to promote the book as well at the same time. So the artists have been guys generally avid success with in the Marvel stuff. McNevin and I did St Civil War and Old Man Logan together and uh, John Romita Jr. and I had done Wolverine together and Lineal Francis Yu and I have worked together recently too. So like we had a sort of established audience that we could carry with us into our creator owned work. Um, so I had a relationship with all of these guys, but I love the fact they took the risk and they've become partners with me too in it. And it's meant the dividends, for example, that John Romita gets from Kick-Ass is amazing. Like he's a producer on the movie as well. Uh, he owns it just as much as I do. It's a very personal project for him too. Same thing with Steve McNevin. There's a Tony Scott movie now getting made of our Nemesis book and he took that risk for a year, four issues, you know, no money to begin with. Uh, and he's, he's hopefully gonna make a lot of money out of it now as a film and as a graphic novel too. With Nemesis, uh, obviously you, you've got this very evil character at the centre of it. Do you find it easier to write the bad guys than the good guys? Uh, yeah, probably. It's funny because in real life I'm quite nice and like uh, a lot of people will say to me, how come your stuff's so horrible? And I've got this theory about it, you know, that all the people I know who are horror writers, for example, or horror fans, are like the sweetest people you can ever meet. They're always so lovely, like almost delicate sometimes, you know? And whenever you meet guys who do like, all ages stuff, you know, like uh, the guys who are the animators on Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and all that, they're always mental, you know, and you always feel that they're perverts and things, you know? And I don't know if, it is, if, if you have to be nice all day at work, at home you become a bit creepy, you know? Uh, and, and I think it's the same thing, that if you do really horrible stuff all day, you're probably quite normal, believe it or not, because you get it all out of your system, you know? Um, so all, all, my, uh, all my friends who do the most horrible stuff are the sweetest guys. So. <laughs> Now, a lot of our readers might not realise, but you started out writing uh, with Sonic the Hedgehog yeah, and Streets right, of Rage, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah that's right. Tell us yeah. about that. Um, I, I just needed the money. I mean, I can absolutely guarantee I had no interest in Sonic the Hedgehog whatsoever. Like, doing Spider-Man and Captain America and everything was always an ambition, right? I never ever thought, oh, I'd love to write Sonic and Tails. And the weird thing is, it's like the Manchurian Candidate. I've actually got all this knowledge in my head that I shouldn't have because I wrote them for like three months or something. And I wrote like two years worth of stuff in three months. I wrote it really quickly. So I know all the names. I know Dr. Robotnik, Flicky the Bluebird, everything that's all in there. You know? But I really needed the cash. And I remember I... I I phoned up an editor pal of mine, the guy who was editing at the time, Richard Burton, who's a lovely guy, and I says to Richard, Richard, I really need some money, is, is there anything going? We were working on 2008 at the time, and they, they bought up so much inventory, they did nothing for freelancers for like six months, and I was like, look, I am so strapped for cash, I've got a tax bill to pay, and uh, you know, can you help me out? And he says, how do you feel about writing Streets of Rage and Sonic the Hedgehog? I said, I love that stuff, you know? <laughs> so, and wrote loads and loads, you know? So um, I, I've never reread it, I don't have copies, and I apologise to anyone who spent money on it, you know? And I apologise to Richard for trusting me, you know?